That is a giant white shark being taken in off the coast of Nova Scotia. She's been nicknamed Nagumi, Queen of the Ocean. Nagumi was tagged and released by OSEARCH, the research and exploring team led by Chris Fisher, who we've been following for years. They hope their latest trip provides new clues on sharks, who have made a huge comeback in parts of the world, though the mystery of the great white has not yet been fully solved. When you see these big females like that that have scars from decades over their lives and multiple mating cycles, you can really kind of see the story of their life unfolding across all the blotches and healed wounds on their body. And it really like hits you differently than you would think it was. Nagumi is one of the largest great white sharks anyone's ever seen. 50 years old, 3,500 pounds. The crowning achievement of a month-long trip off Nova Scotia for the team at OSEARCH. We get pushed around all the time. The wind's constantly changing. After running from storms for 21 days in the middle of this unprecedented Atlantic hurricane season, OSEARCH was able to sample and release a total of eight white sharks on this latest trip, including Nagumi, so-called queen of the ocean. What are you hoping she tells you in the years to come? Well, she has a great opportunity of showing us where the Atlantic Canada white shark gives birth. That is their ultimate goal, something that has never been witnessed, along with so much else about white sharks. If they thrive, the system thrives. If we understand their lives, we can help them thrive. If we lose our white sharks, there's no food for our grandkids. The seals wipe out our fish stocks, the squid wipe out our fish stocks, and the white shark is the balance keeper and the path to abundance goes through them. OSEARCH says their satellite tags, which allow researchers to track the sharks for five years, are a key to unlocking it all. Tagging involves first hooking the shark with a smaller boat, then gliding it into a large lift, part of an old crabbing vessel, as we first saw in the waters off Cape Cod eight years ago. Now that the shark is on the lift, this is when the scientists do their work. OSEARCH tries to keep the sharks out of the water for less than 15 minutes, during which they're sustained by a rush of seawater. Secondary, watch yourself, move! While blood samples are taken... Four minutes, 20 seconds. And the tag is put into its dorsal fin, which OSEARCH says doesn't cause pain because no blood or nerves connect to the fin. Okay, tag's done. From the first time we were on the ship with you in 2012, what have we learned? We knew almost nothing about what the white sharks were doing in the North Atlantic other than some of them were showing up in the Cape Cod region in the late summer and fall. We started to put the tags out there and the first thing we did was to find the full range of the North Atlantic white shark. We now know that they're moving from Atlantic Canada and Newfoundland all the way down the eastern seaboard and through and into the Gulf of Mexico as far west as the Mississippi River. Your methods have been criticized as being too invasive. Why do you stick with them? because that's not what the data says. When you look at the blood data and the stress data, it doesn't indicate that. When you look at the ultrasounds of the animals when they're in the cradle, it doesn't indicate that. So I think that comes from, you know, the fact that what we're doing is orders of magnitude greater than anything that has been done in the white shark space in history. We're studying the biology of the white shark, getting a complete picture of that, as well as the ecology of the white shark at the same time with 21 research projects by 31 principal investigators from all these different research institutions around Canada and the United States. Are they out there right now? Yes, they're there. Fisher talked with us this week on the coast of Long Island another place that's seen an increasing number of white sharks in recent years. They're around you everywhere you go when you're on the water. You know, we've been swimming with them our whole lives. The one thing that's changed since the beginning of our work is that we know that. Yeah, Finley, yeah. looking good, old girl. Finding out exactly where they live and move is not only a key to keeping people safe, it's critical for conservation efforts, and not just here, across the planet. Sharks are in much better shape than they were just a couple decades ago. Is there reason for concern moving forward beyond this? Well, sharks are in much better shape than they were decades ago in the United States of America. But when you leave the United States and they lack management and there is no enforcement, uh, it is still a super big challenge which then affects the global ecosystem of the ocean in very, very negative ways. If the United States is in such good shape as you say, and other places are not, wh where to next for you? Where do you think the worst situation is? Well, we're looking at several places, but one of the places we hope that we could maybe rake, make a real difference is in the Mediterranean. It's just been over-harvested since the beginning of mankind. 
Uh, it's had people around it since the beginning trying to survive and eat, and so it's, it's taken the brunt of, of our growth as humans. How do you turn that back around? To try to get the white sharks moving in the right direction, start creating awareness, and hope that that impacts the fish stocks, the marine mammal stocks, and slowly you're talking about, you know, we turned it around the United States in 20 years. I think there you're looking at more like you gotta have a 100-year vision. Wow, a hundred years. A hundred yeah. year, a hundred year vision because things are so bad in the Mediterranean mm. when it comes to sharks right now. But it is just, it, it's awe inspiring to stand next to one of these white sharks on that lift. Glide your hand. You, I'd rather you do it there resist. than in the water. You couldn't resist. You just couldn't well, resist. Well, we, we spent time with Jeannie a few years back. I wasn't able to see uh, Nagumi right. in person, but now we can track her on the website for, for the next five years or so. And, um, and they're planning to go, so they're, they're, there's talk about going to the Mediterranean and then also spend some time uh, maybe off the Carolinas next summer to try to find out more about where they, where they breed and where they give birth. It's great work and it's, every time we do a story like this, it's the reminder, it's all interconnected. They're yes. all interconnected yes. and that's the thing people have to keep in mind. Top of the food chain, yep. that goes away, everything else does too.